Welcome to a proof of the chain rule of differentiation, which is a rule used to find the derivative of a composite function. Let's first look at the chain rule using function notation, where the derivative of f of g of x with respect to x is equal to f prime of g of x times g prime of x. We often say the derivative of this composite function is equal to the derivative of the outer function evaluated at the inner function times the derivative of the inner function, where f is the outer function and g is the inner function. We can also express the chain rule using Leibniz notation, where if we let y equal f of g of x, then dy dx is equal to dy du times du dx, where in this case, u would be the inner function g of x. So to begin our proof, we'll apply the limit definition of the derivative. So the derivative of f of g of x with respect to x is equal to the limit as h approaches zero of, looking at our definition below, for f of the quantity x plus h, in our case we'd have f of g of the quantity x plus h. And then for minus f of x, we'd have minus f of g of x. And of course all this is divided by h. Remember we obtained h by determining the difference of the innermost inputs. So let's make a substitution for h. Let's replace h with the quantity x plus h minus x. Remember h would be the horizontal distance between two points on the function f of g of x. And now we're going to create an equivalent fraction by multiplying this fraction by a fraction equal to one. So for this proof, we're going to multiply by this fraction here, which is equal to one as long as g of the quantity x plus h doesn't equal g of x. Otherwise, we'd have the indeterminate form of zero divided by zero. So because we're multiplying by one, this gives us an equivalent fraction. But instead of finding the products, we're going to use the commutative property multiplication and change the order of multiplication in the denominator. So next, the only change here is that notice that g of the quantity x plus h minus g of x is now the denominator of the first fraction, and the quantity x plus h minus x is now the denominator of the second fraction. And again, we can do this because of the commutative property multiplication. Now we have the limit as h approaches zero of a product. Because we have a limit of a product, we can write this as a product of two limits. So here we have the limit as h approaches zero of the first fraction times the limit as h approaches zero of the second fraction. Now let's take this line to the next slide. Let's take a look at this second limit first. Notice how we could simplify the denominator because we have the quantity x plus h minus x, which simplifies nicely to h. And notice in this form we should recognize this is the difference quotient for g of x, and therefore the limit as h approaches zero of this difference quotient is going to give us g prime of x. But the reason I wanted to write the denominator in this form is just to emphasize this is the limit as h approaches zero of the change in the outputs divided by the change in the inputs where here we have an input of the quantity x plus h, and here we have an input of x. And we can use this to help us understand how to determine this first limit. We have the limit as h approaches zero of, this is a difference quotient, but notice how our denominator is g of the quantity x plus h minus g of x, which if we look at the numerator, these are the inputs into our function f. Here we have f of, g of the quantity x plus h, and here we have minus f of g of x. So this is the difference quotient for f, but it's not the difference quotient for f of x, it's the difference quotient for f of g of x. And therefore the limit as h approaches zero of this difference quotient gives us not f prime of x, but f prime of g of x, and then we have times the limit as h approaches zero of this difference quotient for g of x, which gives us g prime of x, and therefore we have our proof. The derivative of f of g of x with respect to x is equal to f prime of g of x times g prime of x, or using Leibniz notation, we would have dy dx equals dy du times du dx. I hope you found this helpful.